Okay, in this video, we are going to cover database migrations. And migrations allow us to store our database schema inside of our code files. So if say if you're working with somebody else, typically what you would have to do is you would possibly have your code up on a GitHub repo, and then you might even export your database SQL file. And then the person would have to pull your code and they'd have to import the SQL file. So the bad thing about this is say that you add a new table or a new row, a new column, you're then going to have to export the database again, let the other person know, then they're going to have to update their database to match yours and vice versa. And it just gets very messy. But thanks to migrations, you can define your database structure inside of code. So if we go ahead and just dive in, it'll make more sense as we go along. Okay, so before we created this customer's table, so I'm just going to delete that table and instead of us manually adding this, we are going to create our first migration. Okay, so to create a migration, I can use our handy artisan tool and say PHP artisan make migration. And you probably want to name your migration something kind of similar to what you're doing. Like if you're creating a table, you would probably say create customers table. And you'll see that we get created migration. And now if we go to our code and we go to our database migrations, you'll see that we actually have the third file down here is the create customers table. And we do have two other migrations that are already in here, which is a users table and a failed jobs table. And you don't have to pay too much attention to these. The create users table will actually use in the next video where we're going to show you how you can create a full authentication system with Laravel in under a couple minutes. So you can see that we have our new migration right here, this create customers table. And let's go ahead and analyze this file just a little bit. So you can see that we have this function up and then we also have this function down. So what these two functions do is once we run a command called PHP artisan migrate, it will actually run this up function and it will create a new table with a unique ID and timestamps for us. So once we run PHP artisan migrate, it will run our up commands and then if we ever want to roll back a certain version, like that we added a table and we want to roll that back, we can run PHP artisan migrate rollback. Okay, so for our customer's table, we know that we had an ID and then we had a name. So let's go ahead and add our name here. So I'm gonna say table, and we want this to be a type string. And I'm going to say that I want this to be name, and then I want the default We'll just call anonymous. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then I'm going to run PHP artisan migrate. And you can see that it did migrate all the tables for us. And I'm going to run PHP artisan migrate rollback and we'll actually roll back all those changes. So just to kind of make things simpler, I'm going to remove the two migration files that were already in there. And I'm going to run the PHP artisan migrate command again. And now let's jump over to our database and reload. And you'll see that we have two new tables. We have a table called customers. And of course it has the ID and the name. And then we have a new table called migrations. And this table just keeps track of the current files that have been migrated or files that have not yet been migrated. Okay, so now we can go back and we can add our customers again. We can add Tony, we can add John, and let's add a third one. We'll say Mike. So now if we save that and we go back to our application and reload, you can see that we have all of our customers right here. So hopefully you can see just how powerful using migrations is going to be. It's gonna save you from a lot of headache and it's just gonna be easier working with other people they can then pull in your latest changes, run PHP Artisan Migrate, and have the new tables or the new columns that you've created on your end. And this was just a very basic introduction to migrations in Laravel. Again, in this course, I just want to touch the tip of the iceberg and kind of get your feet wet with a lot of the main concepts of Laravel. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more that you'll want to dive into. You'll want to go to the documentation and read up all about it. Uh, like I said, it's a very simple read, and you can learn about all the different types of migrations that you can use. 
Uh, my uh, best suggestion would be to go through the documentation and just start creating. And as you're creating, you'll need to kind of Google something or search how to do something, and then you'll just grow your knowledge from there. Okay, so now that we've finished migrations, in the next video, we're gonna be talking about relationships and how easy it is to build relationships between tables using Laravel. Hey, thanks for checking out this video series on Laravel 7 Basics. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for watching this series. And I also wanted to ask you to give me a follow on Twitter at T-N-Y-L-E-A. I also wanted to take just a second and let you know about one of my courses that I created called SAS Adventure. And you can visit it at sasadventure.io. And this is a 21 day program that will teach you how to create your own software as a service using the Laravel framework. So if you want to support me, go ahead and uh, check out my course at sasadventure.io and I will see you in the next video.